chica. All right, in this video we're going to take a look at parallel lines and we're going to focus on how you can determine if two par lines are parallel. Now, you've probably looked at parallel lines before, but you're likely always told that they were parallel and then explored different properties. Now we're going to be looking at how can I figure out if two lines are parallel. And uh, as a reminder, parallel lines are two lines that are always the same distance apart. That means that they'll never meet no matter how far we would extend them in either direction. So we're going to look at the concept and look at several different examples in this video. All right, so two lines are parallel if they have the same rate of change, uh, also called the slope. All right, sounds easy enough. And so let's look at some examples. So we'll indicate whether each of the following lines are parallel to the line y equals 1 half x plus 4. And I take the liberty of graphing the line here. And it just as a reminder, if we have it in functional form as it is here, y equals ax plus b or y equals mx plus b, the uh, plus 4, our b value, represents our starting value or where it starts on the y-axis. So we start at across the plus 4. And the number in front of the x, or the coefficient on x, the 1 half, represents our rate of change. And we usually represent that as like rise over run, or the change in y over change in x. So 1 half means if I start at 4, if I go up 1, I would go 2 to the right. Up 1, 2 to the right. And every time I do that, it kind of gives me another point on the line. If I were to go down 1, I would go 2 to the left. Down 1, 2 to the left. And so we connect those points to get this line. And now, we said the idea here for parallel lines is we want to focus on the rate of change. We're focusing on the rate of change or the slope. So the question is then, well, what's the rate of change of this line here? And we're going to look at the number in front of our x, as I mentioned, which is the 1 half. So any line that also has a rate of change of 1 half should be parallel uh, to this one here. So let's look at a couple examples. All right, first example. Uh, y equals 1 half x minus 8. Well, what's our rate of change here? Again, we take a look at the x, look at the number in front of the x, 1 half. Does it match? Yes, it does. So simply put, these two lines would be parallel. Now, uh, I'm just going to graph this one, just so you can visually see that they are, in fact, parallel. So negative 8 would be our starting value. So negative 8 on the y-axis. Our rate of change is 1 over 2. So every time we go up 1, I go 2 to the right up 1, 2 to the right, up 1, 2 to the right, or if I went down 1, I'd go 2 to the left. And then since it's a line, I'm just going to connect all our points, and we'll be able to see that our line looks something like this. And again, we can look at those two lines and see that, in fact, they are uh, parallel. So it confirms uh, what we know about the rate of change. So let's look at a couple more examples here. It's going to get a little bit trickier. Uh, all right, so next line is y equals 10 minus 1 half x. Now, again, the 10 is the initial value here. And over in the negative 1 half is our rate of change. Uh, even though it's in a different order, it doesn't change which is which. So again, we look at what's the number in front of the x. All right, well, it's a half. But in fact, it's negative a half. We have to include the sign as well. The negative means that this line here would be decreasing or going down, whereas our original line we can see is going up. So even though the half is the same, one's positive and one's negative. So these two lines would not be parallel. And so you look at another example. So you have line y equals 5 plus 0 0.5x. And again, we look at the coefficient or the number in front of the x right here, 0 0.5, and, or be more specific, positive 0 0.5. And as most of you would know, 0 0.5 and 1 half are in fact the same number. So that these two lines would be parallel as well with the same rate of change. Right, we're going to look at a couple more uh, difficult um, examples here. So again, same thing. So indicate this time which lines are parallel to negative 2x plus 5. That. And uh, all right, so here we have 2x plus y equals 6. Now I gave a bit of a hint here. Before you can start this one, you need, you'll need to rearrange this equation so it's in functional form, or y equals ax plus b. And we'll notice why in a second. If I, most of you were to look at this and you say, oh, okay, well I want the rate of change. That's the number in front of my x. Well, the number from x is 2. To match over here, I guess I'll highlight this. It would have to be negative 2. So these lines wouldn't be parallel. But the uh, rate of change being the number in front of the x only works when it's in functional form. 
So we're going to have to rearrange this line first. So to do that, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, or bring the 2x over to my other side. And that way, on my left, I'm just left with the y. 2x minus 2x is 0. So all I'm left with over here is y. And on my right-hand side, I have negative 2x plus 6. Now, now if we go and look at the rate of change, our number in front of the x, we notice it's new and negative 2. It's positive up here, and now it's negative 2. So in fact, these two lines would be, uh, would be parallel. So remember, we've got to first make sure it's in functional form before we can really know the rate of change and, uh, and start comparing it. There are some patterns that you could use, and if you know those, then um, that's fine. We're not going to look at those in this video. So let's look at another example here. So here we have 2x plus 3y equals 8. Now, again, we may be stopping going, well, wait a minute, this here had 2x, and it was parallel, so this one must be as well. But before we jump to that conclusion, I want us to go and rearrange this one as well. So we'll start the same way. We'll take the 2x off of both sides. Cancels out over here. 3y equals negative 2x plus 8. And again, we all right, there it works, negative 2, negative 2. But this is not in functional form yet. Functional form means we just have y isolated by itself. Here I have 3y. So to get rid of the 3, since it's 3 times y, I'm going to divide by 3. And of course, whatever I do to one side, I do to the other side. So I have to divide this side by 3 as well. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so they cancel out. I'm left with y. Now make sure you apply the 3 to both the negative 2 and the 8. And I'm just going to leave them as fractions. You could put them as a decimal if you'd like, but I like if I'm looking at rate of change, I find it easier if you're in fractions. So I have negative 2 over 3x plus uh, 8 over 3. That would be 2.6 um, repeating as a decimal. So now that they're in functional form, or that's in functional form, I can look at the rate of change and see it's negative 2 thirds, not negative 2. So these two lines would, in fact, not be, uh, not be parallel. All right, we're going to look at one last example for this piece. So here we have another one, 4x plus 2y minus 10 equals 0. Again, written in a slightly different form. And before we can make any conclusions, once again, we're going to rearrange it. So I'm going to move my negative four, uh, my 4x over by subtracting it from both sides. Cancels here. I have 2y minus 10 equals negative 4x. Now I've got to get rid of the 10 as well. Since it's minus 10, I'm going to add 10. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other side. So it cancels out here. I'm left with my 2y equals negative 4x plus 10. And then we divide by 2 to get rid of the 2 and divide by 2. And again, over here, I've got to divide both pieces. So this cancels out. I'm left with y. Negative 4 divided by 2. Well, that's negative 2 negative 2x, and then 10 divided by 2 is 5. So the question is then, well, are these two lines parallel? Well, we can take a look at our rate of change. This negative 2 here, it's negative 2 up here. But you may notice something else. The initial value is also the same, plus 5. So these two lines, even though they look differently at the beginning, are in fact the same line. So we normally wouldn't call them a parallel because it's, it's the same line. And usually you'll hear them called coincident lines. And that's just a way of saying that it's different ways of actually writing the exact same line. And uh, when you saw it up here, you probably didn't recognize that it was the same one. All right, let's look at one last example here. I'm going to still look at whether um, the line is parallel to y equals negative 2x plus 5. But our example is going to be a little bit different here. Rather than giving the equation of the line now, we're given two points. So I want to find the line passing through the points negative 7, 20, and 3, 0. Now the question is, well, what would the rate of change for these ones be? And uh, for this, I'm going to recommend that you go to your rate of change formula. And you probably remember A equals Y2 minus Y1 over or divided by X2 minus X1. And the 1 and the 2 just refer to our two points. So if this was point 1, we would have x1 being the x-coordinate of point 1, and, um, and y1 as being the y-coordinate of point 1. And over here we'd have x2 
and y2. It actually does not matter which point you consider point 1 and point 2 as long as you fill things in in the proper order. So my next y2 is my y coordinate and my second point which is 0 minus y1 which is 20 divided by x2 which is 3 minus x1 which in this case is negative 7 so I'm going to put a bracket there and I'm just going to continue this. 0 minus 20 is negative 20 3 minus negative 7 is like 3 plus 7, which is 10. And we divide that out, we get negative 2. So this line passing through these two points would have a slope of negative 2. And as we noted before, that's the same. So this line here, even though we haven't seen it, and it's not, we haven't figured out the initial value yet, because we know that the rate of change, or the slope, is negative 2, it would in fact be perpendicular, or be parallel, pardon me. So there you go. I hope you uh, had, had enjoyed the video and uh, check out some other ones. Bye-bye. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.